Hello, this is Tigger Grandma coming to you from Oklahoma. Today I'm going to read a work of fiction that I wrote. Kit was a single mom of two. She loved going out for motorcycle rides with her boyfriend Max. They combined their adventures with their love of abandoned buildings and property. Max was a photographer, and Kit, despite her work in health care, hoped to be an established writer one day. Max always made sure not to publish the locations of his shoots, because he did not want to create interest and have human traffic in the area. He liked to think that he was being given something lovely, and out of respect to the area, he would capture this beauty to share but he would keep the location secret. It is with that in mind my story begins. In an undisclosed location in the heartland of America, Kit and Max stopped their bike in front of an old homestead. The home had an old flowering had old flowering bushes out front and one huge oak tree off to the side. The lawn was bare except for the occasional spent jonquil and acorns scattered about. As they entered the home, Kit appreciated the musty smell and the feeling of walking into a time capsule. All of the furniture sat undisturbed, and as one would expect, covered in a layer of dust. Max commented that he had gotten permission to access the house from the current owner. The home was now held by the River Authority, and was languishing in plans for future development. There were inset shelves on one of the walls in an area just before entering the kitchen. Kit walked over to look at the pictures. There were pictures of families that had now faded and had grown red from years of light exposure. Among the frames was an old black and white photograph of a young boy. He was sporting his side pistols, as was the fashion of that era, with the cow- their cowboys and private detectives. Kit bet that this boy probably had a secret Dakota ring somewhere either on his finger or in one of those pockets. Max had a strict no-talking rule while doing his work, so Kit quietly slipped into the kitchen. The kitchen was a rear-facing kitchen which overlooked the back meadow and an embankment which she assumed went down to the river. Kit wondered about the history of this home as everything, even the dishes, looked as if they had long given up hope of ever being used. She crossed the green linoleum as she made her way towards the window over the kitchen sink. As she started towards the window, she noticed a green circular light hovering in the middle of the kitchen. She waved her hand and noticed the light reflected on her skin. She wondered what could possibly be making such a reflection. She would have to search the backyard for glass or, if she was lucky, a piece of old jewelry. An old memory of an old necklace her grandmother had given her came to mind. The necklace was made of beads of what was called depression glass. She and her mother often hung it in the kitchen window and watched as rainbow prisms danced on everything in the room. She began walking towards the window and saw a strange sight out back. There on the hill behind the house was a little boy. He was running after someone. Kit peered towards the person ahead of the boy and could see that it was an adult male. The man was wearing a suit, but he was carrying a balloon. Something about this seemed really strange, and Kit rushed to the door. Something was not right. She just knew it. Hey, Kit called to the boy. Hey, wait. The boy kept doggedly pursuing the man ahead. There was something about the man that was offsetting to Kit. He seemed to be wearing a dark suit, but something about his build was weird. He was extremely tall, 
but his wide shoulders were disproportionate to his narrow hips. That, and the fact that he seemed to be ignoring the boy, who was obviously trying to catch up to him, didn't set right. It was then that the man looked over his shoulder. However, he didn't look at the boy. He looked at Kit. Then he simply kept walking. Kit, Kit felt in her gut that this whole situation was not right. Hey, boy, stop. Wait a minute. Kit had the dizzying sensation of vertigo, and if she could have stopped and thought about it, it seemed that the distances between her and the boy kept fluctuating. It was probably the mothering instinct in her that kept her running towards the boy. Kit finally caught the boy and reeled him around to look at her. Hey, who are you? And what are you doing way out here? She demanded. The boy blinked and he looked like he had been shaken out of a daydream. He focused on Kit and then he looked back towards the old house. If Kit had taken a moment to look back at the house, she would have stopped dead in her tracks, but her attention was on the boy. The boy asked, who are you? My name is Kit. What's your name? My name is Timmy. Thinking that this boy was lost and that someone had to be looking for him, she took him by the hand and began surveying the countryside. She could see a small cropping of old buildings ahead of her. She thought for a minute that she should go back and let Max know what was going on, and then she thought about disturbing him. She decided that if this was her child, she would be upset wondering where he was and thought she should quickly get him back to his parents. It seemed like ages, and Kit was worried about her decision-making skills by the time they reached the buildings she saw from the river bank. All of the buildings appeared to be abandoned except for one. It was a dilapidated old store with gas pumps out front they had not been used in ages. They had an old store like this where she grew up. It was mostly a convenience store for people to stop and get soda, candy, and junk food. An elderly gentleman stepped out of the store and looked to be tidying up around the trash cans. Hey, Kit called out. Breathless, she rushed up to the man. Hey, my name is Kit. I was up on the hill a ways with my boyfriend. We're taking pictures of an old homestead. This little boy was out there. He appears to be lost. I'm not lost, Timmy interjected. You're not? Well, then, where do you live? Kit asked, somewhat taken aback. Back at that house. You know, you were just there. Kit looked at the old man, shrugged, and smiled. Then she looked at Timmy. You can't possibly live there. That house was abandoned. The old man looked at the boy, scratched his head, and then had a faraway look on his face. He sure looks familiar, but I don't know. He could be the spitting image of my nephew Timothy, but my nephew is in New York City now working for some news station. Okay, thank you. Sorry for bothering you. Kit looked at the boy. Perhaps he was confused. Kids get things all muddled up in their heads, and they quickly lose track of time and distance. Maybe he didn't realize how much time had passed when he was chasing that dude. Wait, what happened to the man in the suit? Again, Kit experienced the vertigo and shrugged. She would have to hurry and get back to the bike. Her bag with everything in it was on the bike. She and Timmy made their way back to the house. She was extremely thirsty. She realized she should have taken a minute to buy a soda back at the old store. As they made their way back to the house, Kit didn't realize the state the house was in. The grass was growing up and in need of cutting. There were vines all over the tree out front. They heard a racket coming from a shed. Funny, Kit didn't remember a shed when she and Max had driven up to the yard. She and Timmy made their way back towards the sound. As she opened the door, she saw an elderly gentleman. He was looking at tools, wiping them with a rag, and tossing them into a plastic bucket. Timmy looked at the man and gasped. 
He hid behind Kit. Kit called, Hello! The old man looked up. He had an old, lost look on his face. He gazed at Timmy, and his face grew sad. May I help you? Yes. Do you know this child? Kit knew she was being blunt, but she was tired and thirsty and wanted to just get this business over with. She pulled Timmy out from behind her. Oh, dear. The man fumbled around and scratched his head. He had a look of fear and then confusion. My wife, she's been looking all over for that boy. Maybe you should go ask her. He turned and began rambling back through the various tools on the shelf. Excuse me? Kit asked, but the man went about his business completely ignoring her. Kit and Timmy made their way back to the house, and as she knocked on the door, she felt as if the house was silent. She looked to the side and realized she could no longer see the old shed. Fear began to well up in, inside, and she knocked louder. No one came to the door. Kit opened the door. The furniture and everything in the house seemed the same as before, but this time there was a different smell. Everything felt different. And where was Max? Kit hurriedly ran room to room, and then back to the shelf where she had seen all of the pictures. Nothing looked the same. There were none of the red vintage shop family photos on the shelves. Another wave of vertigo swept over Kit. It was then that she had the flash of memory of the odd light in the kitchen. Then she had the vague memory of a 1990s movie. She shrugged off the thoughts and thought, that was fiction. Get it together, Kit. She went to the kitchen and pulled out a glass. She turned on the spigot at the kitchen sink. She heard a groan from somewhere under the house and then a clang. She could hear the sound of water making its way to the faucet. Old rusty water spattered several times and then splat. A big rusty mess splattered on the porcelain sink. Then, just as quickly, the water ran clear. Kit swished water around the glass to rinse it, and then she filled it. She quickly guzzled down the water. It had been a long time since she had drunk well water, but she noted the strong iron taste. It was a lot better than that stuff coming out of pipes nowadays. Kit offered a glass to Timmy. He had a strange look on his face. Timmy, how long has it been since you saw your mommy? Kit asked. I don't know. He looked over his shoulder as if trying to pull up a memory. I don't know. Kit ran to the front room and parted the curtains. Max's bike was not out front. It was then that she realized that the whole front yard looked different. That light in the kitchen and the movie memory flashed in her mind again. She shrugged it off. She knew there was an explanation for everything. Perhaps Max had gone out looking for her. Max is going to be so pissed, she thought. It was then that she realized the dirty trail of water on Timmy's face. She also noticed his smell. Whoosh, you smell terrible. How about we clean some of this dirt off of you? She went to the old bathroom and scrambled around. She found an old hand towel and lifted it to her nose. It didn't smell too bad. She searched the cupboard, and there was an old bar of soap. She didn't know why, but it seemed like ages had passed, but by the look of things, it was still the middle of the day. Still, the mother and her moved her to make sure Timmy was somewhat clean before he found his mother. She set about cleaning the boy. Remembering the old photograph, she she asked, Hey, are you sure this is your house? Well, Timmy said, I mean, it looks like my house, but it doesn't. Where's my mama? He had a sudden look on his face as if he could cry. Kit quickly toweled his face and said, Oh, don't you worry. We'll find your mama soon enough. Soon they were heading out of the house, and they heard a noise off to the side. Kit and Timmy made their way to the sound. 
there was an older lady back there and she was singing and hanging clothes on a line once again kit felt that vertigo and she was beginning to have a certainty about something but she was not going to give the notion any credence she called out to the lady hello the lady parted a sheet and flapping in the breeze and said hello may i help you hi my name is kit i found this boy up on the ridge there and he's lost i'm trying to find his parents the woman looked at timmy her face twitched and her eyes blinked her brow furrowed and she said i swear he looks just like someone i know but it couldn't be of course if it was him he'd be buried under a layer of dirt she looked at kit and smiled my boy always loved playing in back he was always out he called it scouting for bad guys the woman looked at timmy and her eyes began to fill with tears no no i'm sorry i can't help you my own boy disappeared many years ago she looked at timmy one more time you go on and find your mama boy as she said this last bit kit realized the few whiskers that appear on postmenopausal women and realized this woman was probably about sixty years old once again she had that feeling of vertigo kit grabbed timmy and ran back towards the embankment where she had begun this whole situation she crouched down and took his hands what is going on here timmy who are you who was that man you were chasing earlier uh i told you my name's timmy i don't know that man had a balloon i thought he would give me one he just kept walking timmy looked as if he was about to cry where's my mama kit hugged the boy and said don't you worry we'll figure this out we'll find your mama they began walking in the opposite direction of the house and they saw a man down on the banks of the river they made their way through a cluster of brambles and they scrambled down the rocks to where the man was sir could you help me kit called the man looked at kit and then back to his line he turned back and looked at timmy then he looked back at kit and said my wife has been looking all over for the boy take him back to my wife she might be able to help you kit took timmy by the hand across the river she felt as if she was being watched she shook off the feeling she looked back towards the house and the house seemed miles away despite the fact that she knew that it wasn't as they made their way through the cluster of brambles they came out and there was a man standing there he had a beard and he was oddly dressed he reached out his hand towards kit and helped her up the embankment he smiled and said don't worry sister i'll take this from here as he spoke kit felt as if she was being en enveloped in a sort of cocoon she felt the weight of the whole day folding in on her and she grew weary she didn't remember what happened next kit kit max shouted as he shook her i've been looking all over for you kit looked around and struggled to clear her head had she fallen asleep what what max did not hide his annoyance as he told her that he had seen her running up the hill he said that he had called and called out to her and she had ignored him he said that by the time he he struggled to get the kitchen door open she had disappeared from sight he let her know in no uncertain terms how put out he was to have lost a day of working looking for her only to find her out sleeping her over the next few days kit struggled to tell max what she had experienced but even she realized how totally it screwed up it sounded she and max stopped seeing each other after the event max sometimes worried that perhaps he had been too hard on kit maybe she had had some kind of medical event however time passed and he thought less and less about her after the event kit began researching the area where she had met timmy 
she learned that there there was a young boy named timmy who had disappeared in the area he had been missing for several days and had shown up totally unscathed it was also noted that she he was unusually clean for having been lost and didn't show any signs of injury after having been missing all of that time kit didn't know what to make of the whole thing her own children completed high school and were off to college perhaps it was the empty nest but she soon turned to alcohol and then to pills she hated herself for it but she longed for that feeling she had experienced when she met that stranger who had called her sister she had had an appendicitis a few years back and as the anesthesia took effect she had been enveloped in a cocoon effect life was so hard and she longed to have that feeling again as the years passed she tried hanging out with support groups and church ladies everything would end when she would trust someone enough to try to retell the event she was viewed as an oddity she never fulfilled her dream of being a noted author over the years she frequently experienced episodes of missing time and forgetfulness her children chalked it off to her getting older her doctor had her tested for dementia and she passed all of those tests so he chalked it off to depression and suggested she see a therapist kit had no time for therapist she did not need one more person to tell her that what she had experienced was not real she began to look more and more into the subject of time and portals she researched nikola tesla and his theories she scrambled down many internet rabbit holes and conspiracy sites for people who had gone through similar situations she learned that there are beings who are able to maneuver through dimensions and times she wondered if she had intervened in an abduction she liked the idea of thinking that she had one day kit was on her way to work she had always chosen to live in rural seclusion so this meant that she had to travel quite a distance to her work as she traveled early one morning no one knows quite what happened but it was reported that her vehicle left the roadway she was taken to an area hospital the nurse aide in attendance was getting ready to take yet another yet i'm sorry the nurse aid in attendance was getting ready to take another set of vitals when she turned to look at kit kit had a dreamy smile upon her face as she said there you are immediately after the monitor sounded the cardiac alarm sounded as kit slipped away